Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Skillet coming to you from X4 Foundations, and it's been a minute since we've had an update in the universe, and there has been a lot of stuff that has been happening, um, and that's all because of 7.0, um, because as we all know, the 7.0 beta brings in the existential crisis. Um, but not only that, it I, it did some tweaking as well to the little pyramid boys and, and the Xenon. Of course, right now we are in the PE, which is a ship that has actually just really kind of grown on me. Um, very much, it, it wasn't like finding the Hydra, using the Hydra and then instantly being in love. Um, this took some time. Um, and what I first want to go over, I want to kind of go over um, the Xenon ships. Because this is probably one of the first times in a long time that I have taken a look at what other content creators have done, especially for, for this beta, because there's just a few things that I couldn't figure out that came to the... Um, I didn't read. Okay, we're going to chalk it up to what it was. I I didn't read. I was just flying by the wire like Skillet does because I like figuring it out. I like um I like taking it apart, figuring it out and really getting getting to know. Um but I just couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around some things. And one of that was the um technology for the Xenon, which I figured out an answer for. You have to destroy an H. Um, I wasn't sure why we couldn't board Xenon craft. Um, figured out that was just part of the a bug in the beta, which was fixed uh, in the second iteration. And now we have a, a little quote-unquote fo flotilla of Xenon ships. But I've also looked at some other, other content creators in terms of these Xenon ships. And let's just do this real quick. So these are the ships that I have used in in combat trials um, and just to fly around on my own. So we'll start with the B. Now, the B is the one that I just don't like the most. And I don't like because of one reason. It, it really boils down to this reason anyway, is the range on these weapons is 2.8. Now, when I first got the ship, I was really excited. I was like, oh, these beams hit hard. It's going to be great. I'm just going to annihilate things. And it can. It can. Um, but as we know with the ASP video, the SHE video, it comes down to you. It comes down to how you play. It comes how you fly, how you pick your flight, or your uh, flights, how you pick your fights. And with the B... The B, I had to pick my fights very specifically and very, very carefully. I made sure that I engaged craft that I was not going to get overwhelmed with. But even if I could fight more than one craft, I'd be able to do it in, in a decent manner for sur <laughs> survivability. survivability. Um, and how I did it, knowing the limitation on range with these weapons... I picked my fights in for ships that were engaged on another target. And I went, I, I tried to boom and zoom as as best as I could. I, it, so for most of the targets, they were M's. We had a few PEPEs in there, um, but for the most part, they were, they were M's. So, uh, you know, a hefty fighter uh, for, you know, arguing sake and so uh, what they were doing is they would engage in a target the M would slow down and what I would do is I would come in behind him and I would buzz him basically they make a buzzing noise um, but the beam time frame uh, there is a cutoff point I would say maybe like an overheat because um, it's not like uh, the beam emitter 
or even like the bison uh, or the mass driver where it just shoots a beam of light. This is a it's a plasma cutter. So it has a length of time and then it stops. And then again, give it about two seconds, three seconds, it'll start again. Um, and for the M's, it take takes maybe two, three charges, depending. Uh, but if I did get engaged against one of these ships, because um, the AI has that mentality of going head first into battle, right? So what I would do is I would wait for the head on to happen. I would uh, attempt to flip my ship to whatever direction that's coming from. And then I would put the back burner in full and I would backpedal the B. The shield can take some damage. I was never worried about that because um, it was just one on one. But if there's a group, that's when I was worried. I was able to maneuver the craft and, and use the craft in a way that I was never in that harm's way. Um, you know, knock on wood. That's not every engagement you ever go through in this game, right? Um, but I think this craft, the bee itself, has made... is a challenging craft in itself. Um, I like it, and I kind of like it for that fact. I'm not going to use it because I'm never going to be in those situations all the time um, where I can uniquely use it. Right now, the Xenon are a menace. Not just the Xenon, but also the little pyramid boys. And it has been... One sector after another sector has taken my attention. And that's really... It's not what I want. Um, but that's the bee. Now, that's how I've flown the bee. Now, the shields on most of these are pretty mediocre. They really are. But, again... I'm really liking the PE. The PE is, I mean, it's quick. We've got decent hulls. It, shields are mediocre. Decent cruising speed, decent travel speed. It, it's, it's a good ship. And I'm not afraid to get into a, a swarm with this ship either. Because the turrets, the turrets do some decent work. You know, 40 shield, 40 hull. But not only that, if I'm going to go up against one head on, I've got the stationary. The stationary 5.8. We're doing good. We're taking down the shields of the target when it gets closer and in no time. It's gone. Um, it's not a big deal. I like I like the I like the P.E. The F is probably the ship that I've had the most intense combat in. Um, and that's just because the F is what I use to get most of the other craft. Um, it's a decent ship. I, I, I can't, I can't fault the F. Um, I mean, its shield is lacking, but for everything that is lacking, speed, shield, a little bit of hull, it was decent enough to put me through a swarm or two and get out alive. We have not lost any Xenon craft um, so far. Um, knock on wood, we'll just grow that fleet and then we'll make our own little probably patrol fleet um, with it. Um, that's probably what I'm thinking about doing, just because I don't know another purpose. Other than the SEs, I don't have another purpose for these fighter craft. Um, but it, to me, they're all decent in their own unique way. And I don't want you guys to go out there and see some of these other content creators, because I've seen it where they've kind of just thrown, thrown them under the bus. And I don't think that's right because just because the, they don't think they're good enough doesn't mean that they all aren't, right? It's how you play. It's how you want to pick your fights. The, the B, you can be very surgical with the B. Um, you have to be very careful of your surroundings. I mean, 
I would encourage you to try them out. I would encourage you once seven comes out, or if you're not a part of the beta, try them out. Don't just toss them to the wayside, especially the SE. The SE has so much utility in that ship because it could be a miner. It could be a transporter for gas, solid, container. There's no loss of life if that ship goes down and you can always get them for free. Basically, right? You just have to waste your time to, you know, make it bail. But they are in such number that you can you can you can come by them super easily. I think that's a great a great ship. So no matter what we do in the future, any series that we're gonna do, or any just one off, I think that's gonna be something that should be one of the first things that players do is go after SEs. Because if you don't capture it, at least you destroy it, which pulls up your fighter rank. And I swear to you, I honest, honestly believe fighter rank plays a part in bailing. I honestly do. Um, I have no proof to I have no proof of that. It's just it's just my belief. I understand the equation and everything that goes into the bailing, but I think fighter rank plays a part too, and I just don't know where. Um, Egosoft, if you're going to watch this, let me know if that's true. I will take it from you, gentlemen, um, in regards, because you made the game. You made the game. You made that algorithm. But, Xenon aside, let's talk about the universe, because the universe really hasn't changed in terms of let's get that out of there in terms of things we did do the new sectors i will say um new sector ceo's doubt megan strat's legacy uh luton's refuge mukai's revenge cardinal's domain i will say yeah I will say, um, I, it's a nice, it's nice to have, oh, hello, to have these new sectors. Ah, and with these new sectors comes this. With the, uh, with 7.0, the beta being released, uh, some of the changes to our universe was more L-class ships, especially for the pirates. And as we see, this pirate is using an E variant, which, <coughs> spoiler alert, we have some. Thank you, pirates, for giving them up graciously and without much of a fight. That's actually really true, though. Um, the crews on the E's have been very small, and I don't know if that's a, if that's a bug or something um they haven't been as large as what they had been earlier in this series um so capturing them has been a little easier which you know i'm pretty grateful for because i have some you're gonna see those in some of the future episodes of uh tales from the front um i mean it's it's nice but not only this let's see if they are still around um, here, I think. Yes, look at this. I love this. A new and old combination. Let's live stream this. Oh, look at that. Right by the, uh, the storage dock, too. Now, um... In one of my current goals to find the H, I've went through Xenon sectors to see if I can find one just alone. And I came across this fleet um, that had a combination of old and new phoenixes. And I absolutely love this. Because it makes me think of the reboot from Battlestar Galactica, where you had the Battlestar Galactica that was, you know, meant to be a museum piece. It's out of date. We have this newer one. I believe that one was the Pegasus. 
and it's bigger, it's cooler, it's more electronic, it's, you know, it's the future. But then you also have the battles with Pegasus and then with the Battlestar Galactica. And that's what that's what this drew me in as. And I really hope once 7.0 comes out. Oh, that's weird. So I'm going to tell you this. Um, I have not seen munitions fly through objects until just right then. Um, so I didn't even see the bug with the uh, with the the Gatling guns. I didn't see that. Um, and it might be something to do with the because I see well. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not working. That's interesting because they, they destroyed part of the facility, just not that last one. Maybe it's being built or something. Who knows? Um. But I love to see this now with the with the 7.0 coming out. I hope the the factions don't do what they did when uh, 5.0 came out, when um, the Paranid got their revamp of ships, because it went from old school Odysseus, old school Atlas to boom, right with the new stuff. I'm gonna get out of that. Um, right with the new stuff, and. I don't want that to happen. And with the Xenon, you see that. You see a good combination of P's, M's, N's, F's, P's, um, S's, S's. I'm seeing a lot more S's and a lot more P's now. Um, but there are a few fleets out there that really stick to that original. And I believe there's actually, I'm going to go back to here. There was a fleet somewhere close in this. Is this it? Yes, close in this sector, which is the original Phoenix. And I love to see this, too, because this this just makes me think this is like old guard, right? People that know their ships, that that know every inch and have full faith in that ship that they're not going to change over to the newer variant. Um, it's something I made up in my mind. I just it's. I think that's kind of cool. And I really hope Egosoft doesn't, you know, I hope that switch doesn't flip for these factions because I really like this look. But other than these changes, oh, um, speaking of changes, uh, scale plate, scale plate green is not, um, or scale plate packed, sorry, is, uh, they're not the same scale plate. So once you get into, you know, Blue Mach and Strauss, Legacy, uh, Refuge, and Revenge, they, uh, I think they're called harassers. They, they get angry. And what is this? Who remembers this from, uh, from X3, the Anarchy port? Leave it in the comment. Um, but they do get angry. Um, now, even though their fleets here, they're, they're better equipped. Uh, they have missiles, lots and lots of missiles. But even though that they are hostile to you, the Anarchy port is actually not. I've used the Anarchy port um, when we first got in there with uh, this guy um, to try to evade some of the patrols, which I learned were not friendly at all. But yet I could land at the Anarchy port, which was pretty nice because that that was they lost the aggro and they they left. But these sectors are pretty bare for the most part. There's not a whole lot in them, which, I mean, could be ripe for the taking, if you know what I mean. You just have to control their angry troll fleets. But other than that in the galaxy, um, oh, and Artemis is missed, uh, or Miss of Artemis, which they have a, uh, nothing else in there as far as I could tell, but Little pyramid boys are just there to stay. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of, oh, hello. Matrix 451 is now under Talati control. Let's see what we got here. That's a new one, new one. New one. 
old, new. That's actually nice. The Talati have so far have a combination of old and new. The Argon haven't, but the Argon also lose their ships pretty easily. Um, so I'm not really surprised with the Argon. Um, as you can see, we've moved our fleet back a little bit because of some interruptions. But what we can do... Let's actually take a look. Because there's not just one fleet with an I anymore. Now here's an H. There are at least three fleets with an I. Um, okay, so that one's the one that traverses between Misfortune 1 and that, and that sector. There's another H. No, that's an N. No, that is an H. Hello. Uh, there was another fleet somewhere here. And then, was there... There was one in one of these two sectors. Maybe it was destroyed. Um, I mean, look at this. The Talati have... Yeah. All right. Good job, Talati. And they did take down... Um, well, I took down the Xenon forces and scale plate green. So that was me. This is their doing here. So we're making some headway in, in terms of uh, fighting against the Xenon. Uh, but for... Our part in the universe, we have actually lost uh, miners, um, which hasn't been nice. Uh, it really hasn't. We're still making money, though. I'm not that worried. The miners can be replaced. Um, yeah, this this is an issue and we have a plan to take that out. That is actually going to be in one of the upcoming videos, uh, Tales from the Front. Uh, we have some new new things that uh, are going to be shown out to you guys. And there's going to be a specific video on one of those. Okay. All right. Spoiler alert. We're talking about different fleets. Okay. All right. Don't hound me about it. We're talking about different fleets. Um, and we'll get into the specific fleets, their specific missions, and their specific loadouts. Uh, well, one specific loadout. But that's going to be Skillet signing out for now. Um, thank you guys for, for sticking with it. Uh, thank you for being a part of this series. We're going to have more polls coming up. We have two additional fleets and we're going to go over how that's going to work later on, but this is going to be skillet sign out for now. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, whenever you watch.